Thank you to all who came uh, to our last reading of the semester. Um, I'm glad you guys in this weather could come out here, and I'm glad our readers are also back. These readers tonight will be uh, Natasha Ali, to be introduced by my readers, Valerie Vargas, to be introduced by Elise Kusek, and Rebecca Gearhart, to be introduced by TJ Lombard. Um, if you guys would like to keep up with more readings like this, uh, be sure to follow the note Dan for your writing on Twitter, Facebook, and Instagram. Um, and a special thank you to the Art, Art History, and Design Gallery for allowing us to hold this reading in the hallway. And thank you to Ricky Williams, who is the artist behind this piece right here. Uh, to start things off, let's have a talk about it. Thank you very much. examination of isolation and constrained spaces. Thrust in a great mix of shiny characters, her protagonists are often taciturn by comparison, choosing to observe their environments and relate to readers a kind of keen, self-conscious burden. Though sometimes hushed, her voice is also resolute, confident in its ability to evoke a powerful tension, a simultaneously anxious and aggrieved yearning by way of her parentheticals or direct at its heart, Natasha's creative work asks audiences to remain just as vigilant and contemplative as her main characters, to empathize with the grappling of space and loss and renewal of clarity. To what extent do people thrive and flourish despite socioeconomic or cultural language barriers? What does a journey from self-sovereignty look like, while also grappling with the ever-shifting boundaries of home and much like her diverse illustrations of scene and characters, Natasha's own background spans a number of countries, the least of which include Belgium, Pakistan, Saudi Arabia, Scotland, Spain, and of course, the US. After spending three years at the University of Michigan, she finished her undergraduate degree studying abroad at the University of St. Andrews in Scotland and worked at an English immersion camp in Instagram, Los Angeles, Spain for eight months. Tonight, she reads from a piece titled May the Holy Man Save Dead, a short story that bristles with ideas of invisibility, respectability, and class worthlessness. As for listeners, I invite you all to journey along with the narrator. See how her fiction explores the many thresholds that may claim to be invisible and inspect the countless within fires that make up the universe's strengths. Just itching to hit Fatima, I can tell. But both of them think that I'm stupid because I cannot read a pause properly. I know only four letters. The seam, plum, the initial PA that bound together spelled out my first name, Fatima. Very baby told me once that my name means either peaceful or safe in Arabic. I think that this is really very funny because I was named after my Salma Fala, and my Salma Fala that in childbirth would be a baby. In agony, unsafe. I would not be able to find Istikam or Siyasi Fatih in the newspaper, even though that is all that anyone here talks about, and they're not talking about any fun. What does it matter anyway that I can only read one books? I'm a maid, and the daughter of a maid, and the granddaughter of the washerwoman. I have two cousins fighting on the streets, and the third working the streets. What use of my people for the living word? And besides, I can read one books, it's fun. The Satamara baby's shoulders, for example, tells me that she is furious that Fatih went to ordered herself that she can go crazy, even after she had said that she wouldn't order herself anything. Listen, I'm going to order a mountain party for the three of us to share, my baby that said in the car that she had driven us past the bus to look when she left. Okay, coffee, we'll have to fix the other ones. It's 
on there in my lap, a verbal response. Walking herself had just muttered something and resumed pulling faces and scruffy tactics. The way that Poppy keeps pulling nothing tells me that she knows that Mara Beauty is very angry with her. The forward jab of her bottom lip tells me that she does not regret snapping her tiny finger with the man's bitter baby self. Sometimes I find Poppy scarier than Mara Beauty when she's only eight years old. And the baby is plenty scary herself. Right now she is aiming to smile at Poppy, but it is a fake smile. It needs to show a smile with no teeth. The kind that says, just wait, just wait until we get home. The kind that she shot me last Wednesday when I asked them to spill the saucer of the shame chai and roots and cheese and ice cubes. Just wait until we get to sleep. Not that my readers hit me. She isn't like that. She did cut my salary for the month and half, though, and when I got home, I'm not getting a tight slap. Penny, Davy, or Charlotte had gone home and told on me, and so I asked that we bought up and Poppy's collection of further in all six of the bedrooms, as well as the drawing room the next day. Many hours to get the around to the new question. I smile at Scumbu, remembering the face look in the super eyes. He smiles back in a special head chair, where he's shouting complimentary white hat and his slimy slippers. I think that Scumbu Baba is the perfect partner for making mischief. He does what I ask without ever complaining. In this way, he is like my little master and my little mousey at the same time. He slides me Cadbury bars from the baby's special fridge, lets me buy him chocolate granitos from the ice cream man instead of mine. So I witness that the new hundred rupee now that the baby gets me to this. Tells no one when I leave to copy those school books, looking at the back of my pictures. Scumbu can't really tell anyone anything because he is two years old and speaks only hot college or do it in crazy, but I know that he wouldn't if he could. He is sweet like that, and entirely would like his older sister to be meeting four different languages. Poppy can be condescending and be urgent that everyone speaks at Brian Beauty's house. She can be panting and be Punjabi that is spoken at Hanan and Adam's house. In curious to be embrace that she is not at the grammar school, not be even in the that she is learning after school. She hates having extra language lessons and all of her other tutions, but Mara Baby makes her sit down with the chili next door neighbor being not twice a week anyway. The Enrique cousins arrive in the hall of summer with suitcases and new languages that the life can still, and Mara Baby is tired of having zero children in very Baby's hush hush family pocket. This summer, Nadi and Rigi had arrived at Balamai Falls, speaking the language of Spain, the language of Senorita, and the Rithic Ocean movies, and Rigi now Nadi and Rigi and Rigi are excited that even sang the whole song for Barry Rigi, with Nadi and Rigi singing the dancers' parts and Barry the books. Barry Rigi had handed both the siblings 5,000 peanuts in response. The whole thing had ended in Mara Rigi smiling the plastic smile. Later, she had complained to me that Barry Rigi had floated to keep an eye on the coffee table. Stop Poppy from watching all of these and the young kids down to the in UK. Double standards for her husky daughter's daughter and Dean had grumbled. For God's sake, Poppy is in UK. And Nadine is what, 15? And then she had smiled at me again to tell me that she probably me gossip and she would cut my wages in half. Or maybe with all of these being all together. In the kitchen, there comes Hame, Cole, and Myra, Baby, and Trill, and she's not around to hear them, which is often because the kitchen is a cook's domain. And what woman with cooks would ever want to cook anything herself? I mean, if I were a baby, I too would just lie in bed and watch movies all day long, all year long. Even bad ones like Mirja and now Shabana and Kazi, because sometimes I feel like taking a shit on my country food. I would not make a single Shabani ever again. The baby hasn't touched butter in years, but she has all sorts of thoughts and becomes all <coughs> Sometimes the chapatis are too big, sometimes they're not big enough or round enough. Sometimes there aren't enough potatoes in the biryani, and sometimes there are too many. Sometimes the biryani tastes too much like palau, and palau makes the baby nauseous. The baby likes wearing short and tight shawars that show the shape of her legs, and so we've all seen her ankles. They are normal ankles, and she has normal front facing feet. She is not like those trail that my friend Marina swears catching the hands and slopes not like a perfect. She is just a silly woman with too much money. If that alone makes the baby a trail from the horse practically calling me the kind. Beggars, lizards, and now witches. Right now, Mara Baby is wearing these white settings that are thinner than anything that I've ever owned. While Poppy and Scumbu Baba are both wearing clothes that the Enrique cousin brought with them this summer. Poppy looks like a Rani in a fancy dress. Scumbu Baba a little sultan in his check and toy shirt. I am wearing one of my sister's nicer hand me downs, a red quick bell, and maybe boy to get the cups. I think that the shirt might have belonged to Sara Baby, Mara Baby's sister in law at one point. Or off the buttons of its throat by missing Poppy. Aya and Shereen Baby, who Mara Baby has invited out to lunch, are 
also where he currently from, from my perspective. The talk is from Canada, I think. I don't know where Canada is, so it is in the South of the so I'm not for sure. Don't be stupid, but I'm going to ask her why my RBD was so jealous that she would be used to travel to God. Very easy, it was only fucking stage when you were used to a land that we lived in the sun, so that it was now two countries. How much of a difference can one land really make? If not from all over the bunch that we must have, they have someone from the earth for a time. They had also found we had them. And as uh, someone not kind of uh, hands on top of that being in Fire's house, the way that main house countries on top of her own. The only time that I have ever left before is to accompany the baby to her parents' house in Mohan. So even I know that Papi is remarked means that Canada must be very far away, the kind of country that you need a special visa for. They keep rejecting the young size applications for a new visas, which is why my baby oftentimes plastic smells at Shri Baby. The embassy people in Islamabad always approve the visa and visa applications because they mistakenly find her less capable of that she could leave in the Sahib, which she does not wish to visit her country without her husband. She would not be able to take me with her, of course, and without the Sahib there, she would have to watch Papi and Sandu all by herself, and she likes watching her children a little lot less than she likes watching movies. I am not convinced that she would even be able to do it properly. I think that someone could end up in the hospital, probably married and herself. I once overheard that he really was for the hard side, but the baby is a bit like the golden bears for me. He used to live there before the partition in this way. Now the baby was trying to be lame, but if Mara would be encouraged, I think that she would be pleased. The baby is probably being Pakistani, and loses her mind in the pictures of Congress, the same as the last of us, but she is also extremely lame. She likes what she has started saying, and the baby is not going to go there looking for the fair enough to be in this as well. I think that the baby once, when Papi was rushing the baby, she said, I have some of the dumb, that's not for you, it's for me, so I don't look like you. I've never minded having a skin color of the dummy soil, but their statement had me for that in all of them. And so I saw her this for what the most powerful walking to plastic brains and giving them some of the kids in my hand. But the kind of kids that had only ever had for the band square choices before. I felt bad that in my duty had hit Poppy for losing her things, but not bad enough to confess, not bad enough to risk losing my job or to risk getting stopped by my own mother. I'm not security puts the babies to shame, but I have to wonder what the babies look like because they were also too fresh out. Maybe it's a good thing that she's a Muslim one, even if she is not from the Monty sort. Somebody in the Muslim request to see the city he is on because the sun has not seen it, and that means that it is time to resort in the mosque, but the baby just looks to that out. It is both funny and not, I think, that I know all of these things about their religion when they don't. There was this photo of Giannis a while back with these Muslim women in Nisr who would make a circle around the Coptic church to stop their own Dashford from shooting it up. I remember thinking that it was pointless to show that kind of thing of fear. Here and there are two um, eager to cut down even their own. No Ahmed is allowed in the Economic Advisory Council, no Shia is allowed to protest some six mentions on the streets. They wouldn't even know where to find the church. I spy some of the waiters running off to the mosque with chuckles already off in the hand to be the to move. She only scowls and shouts louder so as to be carried over the noise of the lesson. Why don't we organize a multi day to be the shrieks of Shri Bibi? If we charge each primary school student at LGS 500 rupees, we'll bring in at least three lakh by home time. Three lakh, Shri Bibi should expect. It cost me three lakh to fly to Mississauga last month, not do business class, shut their airways, three lakh to nothing. The waiter, who had just swung by the table with two baskets of garlic on, catches my eye over the baby's head, he raises an eyebrow. Eyes. If he or I have three hot burnings, we would feel unstoppable. It is only people with money who can afford to be so stupid about it. I know that three lock is nothing, my baby shouts. The Azan stops, that's when she opens her mouth, and so it looks like she's screaming at the other baby about some sort of theory or principle. Maybe she should take off the PSC on the council. The gaggle of Gora sat in a corner of the restaurant smoking shisha starters. To be fair to them, they do not, they do not know what we could say. To be fair to them, they seem to understand that they do fight the people of parents and others. The snakes don't keep smarter than the embassy people at least. They're not smart, smart. I don't know if this type of foreign is stupid to begin with, or if this country just makes everyone get stupid within a second to it, but it is also a stupid thing to become here. They accept rights from people they don't know. They look rooms in the kind of hostels that they do not accept for them. The kind of hostels that they do not accept for them. They flash money like they have no idea of that every. And then they're on the street, caught from the second, they step out of their under their They walk everywhere like 
their body put up here. Then again, maybe their actually there is not to see that they're here after all in September, even if not the time. Here after some deal, here after the law, here after the summer. I know that the lock is nothing, I already do with these. She gestured at me to pick up a piece of mom and give it to some lava. I slid from my position behind her chair to the steps behind his. But if we asked for more than five to leave her head, some of these people would complain about pain. The baby dislikes people even more than she dislikes actual poor people. That is why Mrs. Bushy was in here today, stating that my baby was really the unhealthy guest on the primary school administration's website so that their daughters are left to be your prefects next year and school prefects on their next years. When it is time for the senior school administration to pick an echo, the two babies will draw a left of line of their own between themselves, both fighting for the army. Mrs. Rashid had bought a box of galaxy jewels with her when she had come over for child Wednesday, but the baby has taken a box of imported garden chocolates and bouquet of red flowers with her the last time that she visited Mrs. Rashid's own home. That is why Mrs. Rashid is currently playing on the fish. Shalom, Shireen Baby says, three lock is better than zero lock. Sarah is trying to organize some sort of bake sale, but even the best bake sales only raise a couple thousand rupees. Besides, Mina only got a 92 on the job pre exam last year. They're not going to put someone who can't find triggers on the map of Eurasia on the student council. I dropped out of a very different school when I was around 12 in the highest age, but I know that I would never made it on the student council like theirs. I was curious to saw. Papi must not know either because the baby quickly changes the subject. Mina also only got an 87 in English, she says. 87. Everybody in the lower grammar school circle, as well as everybody in very deep knows that Poppy is a copyright of the baby. Isn't this great? My baby had asked, where did you think that the exam results had come out? 95, you have a little genius in the family. Three geniuses, very baby had corrected smiling. Sahar says the park has been winning studies <coughs> all year long and indeed he skipped another day. Isn't that great, Myra? I had been dusting with painting, Poppy chattering in one ear and scrubbing sugar in the other. I had just known though without having to pass turn around that my baby would be getting Classic smiling. Four minutes, three baby rumors. Sarah shouldn't put so much pressure on her. Some of us just are not better as others. Huh, exactly, the baby says, like, okay. My mossy and my niece and the are both around the same age, 15 or so, and one grew up with the effect of distance. But no amount of polishing can transform the one into one of dirt into a just and like the other. You know, the same way that nothing's going right here with Adam, of course, goes into comparison to coffee special bread. Pinto it, I think, as I slid, spun the bottle another piece of melon. He slobbers over it happily as Poppy and Hannah can take each other's skin and touch under the table. Um, Vargas is a poet and visual artist from Miami, Florida, and an MFA candidate in poetry at Notre Dame. She has taught workshops with O Miami during National Poetry Month, is an assistant editor for Action Books, and has work published in the Watermark and Jellyfish magazine. Reading Valerie's words, I am reminded of poetry's concurrent ability to unsettle the living and to reanimate the dead. Her poems are populated by images of zombie apocalypses, by the tenderness of a group of women when faced with terminal illness, and by the kind of conversation you might not expect to hear between two celestial bodies at the dinner table. Yet always in the background of Valerie's work is the fact that the earth, like a body, is itself a living organism and is in fact the very thing which imbues us with the power, through poetry or whatever else, to heal the living and to reanimate the dead. In Valerie's words, we care for a plant like we care for language. The status of nature and society is connected to our ability to write newness. Valerie's poetry ultimately resists capitalist, masculinist, dominator ideologies and finds power instead in the feminine and in the natural world which, if confronted by a zombie apocalypse, will be our only chance of survival. A section from one of Valerie's poems, La Curandera, after Takako arrived, 
I think, captures best how women, the feminine, and the natural worlds coalesce in her work as a single force for our collective healing. It reads, And Jiangten comes to the stovetop, boils herself in filtered water, until her leaves wilt and soften into the tongues of the earth. She pours herself into teacups. Please welcome Valerie Vargas. Cast life through window blades, 
stumbling leaves, snakes, shadows, and it's been nighttime for two days, and it doesn't snow here. The mother of the rock. Tethered to los llanos in the body, the pena and the viento, she cries, please, please, where are you? I've done some killing I can't amend. They say we are the silk of the same spider, sister, Llorona, and me on the evil. I cradle your head in the crook of my elbow. The solo de besito, forgive me for the soft of your neck. The stories never tell. You hide in buds on the river bend. Flowing black hair, dirty feet, your eyes flushed open. Como la casetena, I noche for me contigo. You were blue and bubbly. We do hate what we want to pray with. Our faces and secrets, we break our skin on water and bubble and sink full in the floor of swamps, stuck like warm nights that slow everything down. Mangroves capture small bodies bobbing through the bog, lit by the silver shine, come moonlight. There is nowhere left to go anymore except stop, and no one left to hear but me, who knows what it's like to be killed by gravity. They can't stand to see their own reflection, dappling silver, moons on the body of labor, and she would heave the oceans if she could, just to save the orange tree, orange clay, the lemons, spill some salt, abandon every new moon, and see by its how she brings the night to the sky. Life is the only resident of mine. This one is not said. This is my amazing part. The sky turns green and vomits sulfur onto the downcast head of me as a nihilist. The mind is a parasite eating its own tip. The thing about survival is that if I survive, I have to stay alive for a little longer for the sake of writing poems for the dead and collecting hordes of them by running in large circles while performing the sad ones. It has been so long since I've spoken to anyone. Some of my audience have their lips scratched off their faces. One is half naked like they got scratched sitting on the toilet. Someone once called me a fatalist, but everything is dead, so wasn't I really a realist? I only have hope that I don't go easy, and if I do, maybe the man that I loved four years ago will find me somewhere in Nebraska and have the courtesy of blowing my brains out in the middle of the wilderness. Who knows how long I'll be walking. If I live long enough, I hope to be home starving. Look at that last
My lungs that are no longer breathing air, but the acrid smolder of a tree in the field behind that church, lit like a cigarette. Think about how it was before. Can you remember? Living with a fire in the woods on a sober day in September. It began in a withered bush. Missile trees, maple trees, whose leaves were in the flames and bark to pick them. I miss a cigarette. If I had one, I would light it with the ember of the tree whose bark is going orange, growling at me. You're a liar, put me out, goddammit. I kept on walking because I didn't have a cigarette, and I remembered that alligator that told me the fire will cease when you can't breathe. The fire will cease when you can't breathe. All hospitals look the same. They are pale of green, checked linoleum, raw yellow walls, and curtains in the shape of lemon. Esther's floating, the ripe of fruit, pineapple, maybe raspberry. This one is in the heart of Florida. The last time I was here, I smelled pineapples and raspberries. You are a flower to me. You smell like fruit. The fire will cease when you can't breathe. Does all the ash of the ground fill my mouth? Does all the ash of the ground coat the nucleus of my lungs? On a sober day in September, it began in the river birch. In seven days, the green sky will spill the holy grave of Jesus. Machines are deep for long. They used to hum and breathe on their own for bodies. Butterflies are bodily fluid. A nectar of pineapples and raspberries. That is why we are all here. The butterflies are here. If a girl is an author, will she be writing? Carter Florida. I was a girl once. A girl once weeping leaves down into the lakeside roots of the treehouse. A rabbit with yellow eyes watched me. A girl is a weeping willow with a rabbit living inside. The rabbit with one foot and holding on to a peppermint cane. A girl thinks the rabbit's foot will keep her safe. A rabbit thinks the girl's tears will keep him sober. I was a poet once, and a girl stopped praying a long time ago. There is only one God. A girl knows his name, and all men know his gift. A girl was in the church, wanted to be alone, but the butterflies were watching. Carter for him. A rabbit with the vial of a girl's tears mixed a drink with a peppermint cane cut a fig and drank it in. A girl was a poet once, wanted to write down what the rabbit said but didn't. Pictures the rabbit of moving forth in a kaleidoscope. A girl is cotton. A girl is cotton, smiled, a snake with the story of heaven. If a girl dies here in the boundaries of this hospital, a girl may never leave. Don't let me die here. Heart of glory. All blood running blue rivers along the girl's coast. Of course, the girl lives in the shade of the dog. There used to be a god. He lived in a chapel down the road. Four more days to light a stone. A girl's body swings like a pendulum, a copper, a threaded needle, a ball chain, a spigot, a dad with a peppermint stick, a dog tooth calf. If the author were here, she could clarify, but the author is dead, so she can't. University of Notre Dame are very lucky to introduce to you Rebecca Greenis Gearhart. Rebecca is a first year MFA student from Westchester, New York, and she studied painting at the Kansas City Art Institute. Her writing can be found in American Cordata, 34 Parallel, and the Opera. Her work is lighthearted at times, marked with the jouissance so often overlooked in everyday life. This is, of course, accounted for by Rebecca's unique talent of perception. A rare sharpness, a fine-tuned sight that leaves no stone unturned. In other moments, she writes heartbreak, 
brought with waves of crushing emotion that found her words distinctly touching. As her novel in progress vividly displays, Rebecca's penchant for detail roams the mind, embedding the reader in worlds engrossing and often delightfully unnerving. She is an expert in the aesthetics of American loneliness. Its desperation, its nostalgia, its flutters of emptiness. Rebecca maneuvers these extremes skillfully, maintaining her trademark dexterity to pull each thread tight. Tonight, we will hear a series of Rebecca's short plays focusing on the Jewish diaspora over the course of human civilization, performed by Rachel Thomas, Livia Johan, and Kalista Kinnan. These plays shed light on the strength and solidarity of the historically oppressed culture as it moves throughout the ages. Rebecca's capacity for embodiment shines through as a multiplicity of characters flash in quick succession, skipping into each other while remaining vivid and genuine. In these pieces, Rebecca intersperses the quotidian and the dramatic, oscillating between patently theatrical dialogue and the familiarity of day to day developments. I've had the pleasure of watching these pieces perform and can attest to their strength and power and quality. I am honored to introduce them tonight. Please join me in welcoming Rachel, Livia, and Felista to the stage for a performance of Rebecca Green Spearheart's Diaspora Scenes. Oh, yeah, Nazi bastard. My grandfather was a drinking enough. How did they really? 
immediately know it's Ivan the Terrible. Of course it's him. Hiding in Ohio. They were going to get me out to Ohio, that's for sure. No place for a Jew. That's what my mom would say. Bedford Hills. In Christendom in the year is 2010, for the Hebrews 57 71. Behind Max, a dozen laundry machines are working. There are two hours left in his shift. He calls his best friend, Nick, who is a pizza delivery driver. Hey, what are you up to? I'm working. I haven't delivered near you. Let's move back. We're not I'm starving. Max checks his cell phone. He has a text from Sabrina Richards, his one true love. She's invited him to a party on Saturday. Saturday? Rosh Hashanah. My mom will never let me out on Rosh Hashanah. Hey, man, I got pizza. But all we have is pepperoni. Can you pick it off? Savannah. In Christian known the years 2017, for the Hebrews 57 and 78, this is Peter is teaching Shakespeare to stand in 7th grade class. Who wants to be Shylock? Four or five hands shoot up in the air. Already, before the blackboard, stand the 7th graders who will be playing Jessica, Portia, and Antonio. Why don't you raise your hands? Jenny whispers in Sam's ear. Oh, Samuel Finkelstein! Was that you volunteering? Around Sam, the other students pump their hands enthusiastically into the air, still hoping to be called on. Maybe recite the Shakespeare will have refined some of that filthy language. Come on. Now, who wants to play the song? Somewhere outside the walls of Eden, in the beginning, Lilith walking. You sent me out, doomed to overgrow with thorns, to live amongst the jackals, the wildcats, the unclean desert bees. Do not forget that you wrote me. From you, I came to be. I was there. You will remember me. You will. You will. I saw Eve, did you hear? Outside these walls, roaming, filthy too. Like me. From you, 